I want to do this. I really want to do this. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to react to your tarantula enclosures. I asked on my Facebook if you could send me photographs of your tarantula enclosures. I got way more responses than I anticipated. So I'm going to try to get through all of them, but if we don't, I will do a part two of this video later. I said I'm going to give my honest opinion and I do mean that. So if I give you any criticisms or things that I personally would change, it's just my opinion and what I would do. Doesn't necessarily mean that like you have to do that or anything. Because I will say from saving all these images, I didn't see one enclosure that I thought was bad. But there are a few where I would just maybe change things. And that's what we're here for today. I told you guys I'd be giving my honest opinion. So don't get mad at me. And this isn't to like say that all my enclosures are perfect. I do pretty simple setups, so, but I just thought it'd be fun. Plus a lot of pet YouTubers do this video for other animals. I thought nobody's done it for a tarantula yet. So let's just do it and see how it goes. It's kind of hard to mess up a tarantula enclosure though, not gonna lie. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to Blake for joining my Patreon. Thank you so much. If you want to join my Patreon, I always put a link below. All right, let's get started. So I basically saved all the images that you guys sent me on my Facebook and I organized them in folders. So I guess let's go ahead and just get started with the Canthoscaria and these are all Aegeniculatas. So this is a really cool setup. I really like the enclosure and I actually prefer light glass enclosures like this. The only thing that I would change is that this piece of cork bark that goes all the way up to the top that would be like a pretty long drop for an Acanthoscaria geniculata. They are a pretty large bulky species. So I mean, it could injure itself if it did climb up there and it happened to lose its balance. But then again, I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a good setup. I think it's a really good setup and it looks like those plants are live. If they're not, it's definitely fooling me, but I really like the setup and I would like to utilize live plants and more enclosures personally. So this one is, kind of a little bit of the same thing. The top of the substrate from the top of the enclosure is pretty big. So if the Acanthoscaria geniculata was to climb up to the top and it fell, it would probably be injured. Um, that's not to say that the enclosure isn't good. Um, terrestrial tarantulas don't usually climb, so you don't really usually have to worry about it. It is just something worth mentioning. That said, I really love the design of the enclosure and I think the background is really cool. It looks like they used a lot of moss. The plants aren't real in this one, but the moss is good because Acanthoscaria geniculata do like higher humidity, so that certainly would help with that. Considering that these types of enclosures have a screen top, that makes it more difficult for them to maintain the humidity. But when you do have something extra in there like moss, it certainly will keep it higher than if you didn't. Okay, so one of these is an Aegeniculata, which is on the left, and the other is a Bee Bohemi. So very cool. I really like this one. See how in the forefront, they kind of have less substrate, and then as it goes back, it rises. That's kind of like a really good way to put a lot of substrate and kind of shorten that distance in one of these exoterras because I personally love these exoterra cubes. I think they're really great display tanks. So. If you see how he or she designed it, they did a really good job. Plus that piece of cork bark makes a great hide for it. And the use of live plants looks really good. Same goes for the Brachypelma one. I really like that piece of wood and I don't know if, I guess that's a real plant in there. That's really cool. I, I really love the look of it and I can see a water dish. So yeah, cool enclosures. All right, so this is another Canthoscaria geniculata and this one's pretty basic. Um, I, I do like the dead leaves. I'm not really sure like what's going on, like if it can crawl behind that, I guess. Um, it has a water dish and I do like, what is this a stone? I like this setup. I think it's really good. Personally, I might add just like a teensy bit more substrate, but Acanthoscaria geniculatas, from my experience anyway, don't seem to burrow as much as other species. So, I mean, it's not necessary, but it does, like I said, reduce that height in the glass enclosures. All right, so those are all really cool. Let's go and jump to a Phonopilma. This is one of my favorite genus, so let's get started right away. This is an Aphonopilma Samani setup. I can't really see the whole setup, so I don't know exactly how it is, 
but I will say that I do like the use of their water dish. It's a nice big one. Ace Amani's certainly love humidity. They actually need it. From my experience, I've had one that had issues molting. Personally, I think that if I had more humidity, maybe we could have avoided that bad molt, but you know, hindsight's 2020. We learn as we keep, but it's really pretty. I like the use of the flowers. The only thing that I might suggest changing is the rocks, although they do look really cool. Since Aphonopelma samani do have a tendency to burrow, it would just kind of worry me a little bit that the burrow would collapse and a rock could potentially fall on the spider. I'm always really cautious about using ornaments or anything like heavy. If I know that it's going to burrow a lot, I usually avoid like heavier water dishes and stuff like that. Just something that I do, but it's not like you have to listen to what I would do. Like I said, this video is just what I would do. It doesn't mean that anybody's wrong. So this is an Aphonopelma calcodes. This is a really similar setup to something that I would do. It's very simple. It may not be as extravagant as other setups, but it definitely gets the job done. And the substrate is pretty dry, except a water dish. That's how I would keep it. Because Aphonopelma calcodes, unlike the Samanis, actually don't need a lot of humidity. They come from drier climates, such as Arizona. So yeah, totally cool. This is another Aphonopelma calcodes, and this is one of the, oh, it looks like it's kind of right here. It looks like it's been cut and designed. I'm kind of wondering, is this a basketball enclosure from Hobby Lobby that you've like DIY'd? I really like this setup though. It has everything. It has the amount of substrate to keep the top from being like too far from the ground. And it also has really pretty flowers and I like the piece of cork that it can kind of retreat under. And we have another exoterra. This is for Anaphonopelma hensi, one of my favorite Aphonopelma species. So I remember that they said that they have rocks and it was like replaced with a proper water dish. So I don't know if they still have this, but are these live plants? Cause that is really cool. That looks like, re I really like that. So I think it does look like a little bare up here, um, but that's probably because I'm used to seeing these with the background. I know some people have a preference with or without the background. Personally, I do like the backgrounds on the exoterras, but I mean, it's not necessary. It's just a cosmetic thing. Okay, so this is an Aphonopelmus Samani enclosure. And like I said about these ornaments, I always worry that their burrow could cave under the weight of an ornament, depending on how they dig it out. But it looks like this one is kind of like resting right here. And I would assume that the Samani webbed up really good. So as long as you're like watching it, you know, it's all good. But I do like the amount of substrate that it has because like I said, Aphonopelmus Samani love to dig and it's really kind of shown us how much they can really change an enclosure around. Also, bin setups for Aphonopelmus Samani, even though I don't do them, I do think that they are probably easier to maintain because they hold that humidity better. And like we talked about earlier, they really do need that. So this is another Aphonopelma Samani enclosure and they're holding a ruler up to show that they have like six inches of substrate. The substrate looks pretty damp. It's in that bin setup. It does have an ornament, but it looks like it hasn't dug out like under it. It just kind of is hanging out under the top part of the ornaments like mouth, which I think looks really cool. It looks pretty spooky. Even though this isn't like, I guess the best display cage because it's a bin setup, this is really appropriate for a Samani. And honestly, like I feel like I should do this for my Samani because it would just make the humidity so much easier to maintain. And we have another Aphonopelma Samani. This one also looks like it's in a bin cage and I really like the use of these plants. I'm not like, there's some plastic plants that I really just don't like. And then there's some that I really, really enjoy. And it's this kind that look kind of like succulents. And then I like how they have this piece of cork that's half buried and it can kind of like retreat in there and kind of dig it out as it wants. The substrate looks nice and damp. It's a really cool enclosure. And I think this is a really nice setup. Okay, so I got so many avicularia enclosures. So let's just start from the top. So this looks really great. I mean, I have like nothing bad to say, but um, is this like a foot? Cause that definitely, the... you guys are weird. <laughs> okay, this one is one of my favorites. I really like how they did this. I don't know if they DIY'd it, but I'm going to guess they did cause I've never seen anything like this. And it almost looks like a computer box or something. I'm not really sure, but Regardless, I really like the tube of cork and the entire setup just looks really nice. 
Okay, this avicularia looks like it webs a lot. Mine doesn't even web this much, so some of them can be quite the webbers, and this one definitely, um, yeah. <laughs> it would be hard to keep this enclosure clean just because of how much webbing this one seems to put down, but the enclosure looks fine. And this is a really nice one, it's clean. It looks like this one either just moved in or hasn't really started webbing yet, but I really like the, um, I really like how this one's set up. It's very, can't think of the word. It looks really good though. I really like the use of the flowers, the colors, the amount of substrate, the way that it is put together. It just looks really nice and clean. This is a great example of a DIY. You can get these like cheese ball things from like pretty much anywhere, I guess. And a lot of people turn them into tarantula enclosures for arboreals and even fossorials. So here's a good example of one. I do think this looks like um, pebbles which I'm guilty of doing this before too. It's not necessary. It can save feeders from drowning. And in my experience, arboreals sometimes are really poopy about eating. So like I can see why maybe they did that. But if you did that because you think that your tarantula could drown, I will say that avicularia are typically really good swimmers. So it's not necessary. This is a really nice setup and I like how it's webbed up. Everything looks good. This is one of my favorite kind of enclosures. I actually have my P. regalis and something like this that Rob C. Uh, gave to me, but I really like how it's set up. The plants all look good. This one also looks like quite the Weber. It looks like it has lots of anchor points, so that's good. And this, oh, it's all the way up here. This is where the avicular is. So the enclosure looks pretty big, but it'll grow into it. Other than that, it looks great. This is one of my favorites. I really like how you glued the water dish here. I always like mean to do that, but I feel like they come unglued so much. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but this looks really great. And I can tell that you DIY'd it. I love the wood. Everything is just fantastic. And we have another Exoterra. This one looks really pretty with the fall color leaves in it. Who's this? Why are they in my video? Oh, that's it on the TV. Okay. DIY lanterns. Oh, I want to do this. I really want to do this. Tell me if you guys want me to try to DIY a lantern. I see so many spooky ones out for like Halloween right now. And I've been thinking about it. And the skull, everything looks really nice. Oh my gosh. Is that a cauldron? You have a cauldron and a skull in it. That looks so cute. I love that. Okay, so that's it for Avicularia. Let's go ahead and go to Brachypilma, which I think is the one that I got the most from. Brachypilma albopilosum. This one looks good. It looks like a lot, there's a lot going on. So we have cocoa fiber, and it looks like we have some coconut husk, some moss, some wood chips, and then a piece of wood. I really like the variety of textures. It's totally fine to use wood chips to like put on top of cocoa fiber. I do that a lot. This one also looks good. I like the skull and the moss. Okay, so this one is a Brachypilma Hamori and a Brachypilma Smithy. And it's a divided tank, which I guess are controversial because they can, I guess, in theory, get to the other side if they really wanted to in some cases. But if you're really careful about doing it and like making sure that everything is sealed and closed off, you really don't have that much to worry about. Same kind of goes for like beta fish because I used to really be into beta fish and a lot of people would say not to do divided tanks because they can't always end up on the other side somehow. But I did a divided beta tank and I did it right because I never had that issue. So as long as you do it right and you know what you're doing, then you're good. This is a Brachypilma Hamori enclosure and it looks like, is this the Hamori? Are you molting? What is the but it's really cute. I like the skull. I like the composition, the water dish, the amount of substrate all looks good. I like this one with the little skull. This is a Brachypilma Hamori, very fall themed, very, what is it? Southwestern, I guess. <laughs> okay. This one's really cool and creepy and it's super appropriate. It always makes me really happy when I find other subscribers that are like into like horror movies and stuff like me. And this is a really great enclosure. I will say though, um, I would be a little careful because if the tarantula did fall on something like it could potentially injure itself, I might add just like a little bit more substrate just in case. All right, so this is also a Brachypilma homori and this is a really good example again, how to make it shallower in the front and then pulling it back and going up higher as you go. And I really like the plants, I really like the wood, the composition, everything, the colors, it just looks so good and natural. And this is what I really 
would like to transition my enclosures to eventually. This is another Becky Pilma Homori. It looks like we have a hide water dish dirt. I mean, there you go. That's everything you need. And here's another basic setup. Pretty much the same concept. Looks like a water dish, hide, dirt. Um, again, maybe a little bit more substrate. Like if this is one of those like enclosures that like the glass ones, I would fill it up like halfway with substrate and just a bin setup. This is as basic as it gets, but it's totally fine. It's really, I mean, it does the job. So you have the hide and the water dish and the dirt, and this is in a Tupperware, so the humidity should actually stay really good. And this is all Brachypilma species. So this, I mean, there's really, this is great. I like it. It visually looks good. It looks like they have everything they need the amount of substrate, the hides, the water dishes, like it looks really good. And then we have another divided tank. This is two M. robustums and two Brachypilma vegans. It's it's simple, dirt, hide. I don't know if there's a water dish in there. Do you need a water dish? Depends who you ask, but nonetheless, it looks really good and it gets the job done. Okay, let's move on to Carabina. We have four carabina enclosures. These are very similar to avicularia. So this is a really good example of like a plastic DIY container. I'm not really sure how much ventilation it has. I would, oh, I do see it, ha it does have ventilation on the sides. So that's really appropriate. Oh, this is a really pretty carabina versi color. I'm like super stoked for when mine gets this big. But yeah, this looks great. And I see it has that cross ventilation that so many people really say that you need for the species. And this is a really great enclosure. So plenty of space to like kind of adventure, but also like lots of nice anchor points, even on the ceiling. It's just really good and it looks great to the eye. It's a good display. And then here we are, very basic, lots of space. So it can web up some anchor points, a water dish. I'm not, oh, this is an exoterra. So I think they already do have cross ventilation. So yeah. That's pretty good. All right, so let's do a couple more and then we'll save the rest for a part two of this video that I will probably do sometime in October. So next let's look at Ephibopus. <laughs> and we have a emerald green skeleton right here. I mean, it really, it really works. I mean, that that's all they really need. That's all they want is just a jar of dirt. Honestly, with this species, it's just not even necessary to try to make it look pretty because they just want dirt to like make a burrow. That's it. This is the blue fang and same concept here. It looks really pretty, but I doubt that this tarantula comes out too much. I think I see a leg there, but uh, yeah, that's, that's what this genus seems to do. And then this is just a regular E. Moranus or regular skeleton leg. And it looks really cool webbed up like the skeleton. And the, I think this is a really cool setup and it looks spooky. And this is something that I would like want to put in my living room for everyone who comes over to see. But I mean, they don't really need that, but it makes it look pretty for us. So of course, like it looks great. I love it. Okay, so I actually got a lot of green bottle blue enclosure pictures. And I don't know if it's because when I made the post, I posted my green bottle blue enclosure. And so I guess a lot of people were like, hey, here's mine too. Or green bottle blues are just really popular, which is like true also. This is a really cool setup. Lots of anchor points for it to web to. That's like what they really want to do. I would almost consider doing less substrate. It's not necessary, but I just feel like they are like, People say they're not semi-arboreal, but they really do like to just web. Like they don't usually dig. Some do, but they don't usually dig. Yeah, this is a good example too. I mean, it's just like, it seems like people kind of like do like half substrate, but like a little bit below half and then lots of space for webbing and anchor points. Same with this one. Yes, we need skulls. If you have a green bottle blue without a skull, I'm. it's not that I'm like judging you, but I just feel like it might be a sin and you might wanna like find at least a bone or something to put in it, like something. <laughs> this one's a little bit blurry, but I can see what all is going on. There's lots of places to web up. I would say maybe it looks really big to me. I mean, it's not like it matters if it's big. Some people say you can go too big. 
I mean, that's up for preference, I guess, but it looks really good. This is a very simple setup. Looks like everything's covered in web, which is very typical for this species. I would like, maybe I would put something else in here for it to web too, just because it would like, there's nothing wrong with it, but it would just bother me to like have this empty space not webbed. Like I want everything webbed. So, but it looks good. And I like the enclosure itself. I wonder if that's DIY'd. Okay, so I think this is actually my friend Dallas's green bottle blue, and he sets his, a lot of his spiders up like I do, and it looks good. This one is really nice. It has a ton of places to web, plants, sticks, dirt, just the right amount, I would say, for this species. I, w I would almost say that this really mimics its natural environment the most because from what I've read anyway, green bottle blue, they really like to hang out at like the bottoms of bushes and web them up. So they're not quite underground, but they're not quite like up in the trees either. So this is a really nice setup and it looks great. This is another good setup. So it might be, I don't know, like, I mean, actually no, like I would say maybe it's a little too high, but as you see the substrate goes back and it just goes up higher. Like we talked about several times now. Um, so that looks good. And yes, the water dish is dry, but this species is not as dependent on humidity. I don't think that they are a high humidity species at all. In fact, I think they prefer it just a little bit on the dry side. But I mean, you can of course put water dishes in with everything. It can save them from dehydration if they ever reach that point. So it's kind of like a safety net pretty much. This is a really cool, simple setup. I do remember that they said that this green bottle blue recently passed away, so I'm so sorry about your loss. The setup looks good though. Like I don't really think that had anything to do with it. I mean, it just happens, so. But yeah, this is like a basic setup. It has lots of places to web. It does have that water dish as a safety net. I mean, it looks good. Okay, let's move on to the Grimmastola, which is my favorite. <laughs> and I think after we look at the Grimmastola, we're gonna cut it here and we'll do a part two sometime next month. So this is a G poker piece. It all looks good. In my experience, G poker piece do not seem to dig like at all. I don't know if mine's broken, but neither of mine do. So I really like this setup for your Grandma Stola Porteri. So it's not that they dig because they typically don't dig much, but it's the amount of substrate that keeps it to where if the tarantula was to climb at the top and fall, she wouldn't be so prone to injuries because of the amount of substrate that she would have to break her fall. It wouldn't be as far of a fall. Also, it's really nice to see this gradient, how it goes from like dry to like damp. That's like a really good way to keep your humidity where it kind of needs to be in an enclosure. Like don't obsess over humidity. I never think that anybody needs to do that, but this is like a good example, I guess. And yeah, since Grandma Stola Porteris don't typically dig, this ornament in here wouldn't worry me about like it collapsing a tunnel or anything like that. You see them in like a 10 gallon and it just looks wrong. Like, I don't know, I'm just so used to seeing a rose hair in a 10 gallon aquarium with just enough wood chips to cover the bottom and like a sponge. So it's nice to see a 10 gallon done like correctly. Like this looks really good. Okay, so this is a Grandma Stola Pulcra. They actually do prefer a little bit more humidity. And as you see, the substrate is all damp. It's in a bin enclosure. I think that this is a really nice looking one and it does the job, certainly. This is another Grandma Stola Pulcra. And yeah, this one also looks good. I guess it kind of dug out over here where it made its hide. It has a decent amount of substrate. So yeah. This is a little squishy G Pulcra piece. I always feel like they would just like squeak if you just... <laughs> But anyway, yeah, it all looks good. It's for slings, you just kind of need dirt and to keep it a little bit more moist. This is a Grandma Stola Rosea. I think this one looks good. Water dish hides. I mean, yeah. And this is a very similar setup to something I would do just because I tend to keep all my night critter keepers, which so yeah, <laughs> it looks great. I mean, I would do this. All right, and then here is another critter keeper, a little hide right here, wood chips, water dish, very basic, but Fine. Oh, and this is a Grandma Stola poker piece. So this one looks really cool too. It has a water dish and it looks like it could kind of make this into a hide. All right, we're gonna call it there. So we have LPs and Balfouri miscellaneous. So these are species that I didn't have enough of to make its own folder. 
not specified. So this is people who sent me photographs but didn't tell me what species it was for, but there are still some nice enclosures there I would wanna talk about, plus pokies and t-stermies. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure that you like it, subscribe if you're not, and you want to be. Don't forget that I have an Instagram that I use probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon, link below. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, like hopefully you did, we will just go ahead and do the part two like sometime next month. Felt like this was like a lot of talking, so much talking. I'm so tired of talking.